today we are going to be looking at uh, just a few issues. It's going to be a short session, as I expect. Uh, I will introduce Arrows Education, just in case we have anyone on the call who is not familiar with Arrows Education. Then we talk just briefly about the Caribbean, then medical studies in the Caribbean, uh, with a focus on Antigua and Barbuda. And then uh, I'll talk about the entry requirements for the pre-med program, the medical program, as well as uh, uh, opportunities for transfer students. And then we'll talk about the intakes and then we'll take uh, uh, a few important questions. And if you have any question, I'll be willing to address them as well. So ours education, as for those who are familiar with our programs and who have been attending the uh, sessions for the past, uh, I think four years now that we've been on, uh, we are covering uh, 30 plus countries around the world uh, with over 1,500 institutions on the list of our partner universities, colleges, and schools. And we, of course, that will naturally cover thousands of courses in various fields. So I can boldly say, uh, irrespective of the field you are interested in, there will always be a place where we can support you to go. And then uh, we are covering from elementary school to PhD. So every level of education is covered. And our consultations are completely free. I, I mean, up to the time where you make a decision for us to support your application, your visa, and all that. But uh, like this session we are having, it's always free sessions that we have like practically every month where you can ask questions, we explain how things work in different countries that we are covering. And then you can even uh, ask questions about countries that we are not covering. And we are always happy to explore and get back to you with uh, information that will be useful for you. So all of that. And then sometimes people want to ask questions about certain things. They are not sure about their own qualifications. They are not sure about requirements. They come to us. It's always free when you contact the office. So and we at the end of the day, when you make a decision that you want us to support your application process to transfer to, I mean, or to move to another country, all of that service that we provide, I think, like I, I from from our experience, from our research, we are one of the most affordable support services that you can get. So uh, and not only uh, affordable, but also dependable sincere and trustworthy service that you can get. So these are the uh, social media handles of uh, Arrows Education. You can always uh, visit the website. There is a lot of information there. You can read up the blogs to get more information about any countries you are interested in. Uh, you can check the Instagram web page for different uh, information from time to time. There are posts there, go to Facebook page, uh, we also have a YouTube channel where all the previous sessions, uh, webinars that we've had is there. In today's uh, webinar, we also be added to it after the session. So for previous ones we've done on scholarships, on different countries, on uh, countries where you can have citizenship after study, where you can work when you study the different kinds of scholarships you can assess, you can go to the YouTube channel for that as well. And then this is also the uh, WhatsApp number where you can chat with people in the office at any time and you can get uh, information that you need. The contact, uh, the contact email is also on the uh, footer of the screen. So you can always uh, go there and get uh, some useful information. Today, we are talking about studying in Eastern Caribbean. That is where Antigua and Barbuda is located. So the Caribbean is a huge place of about, I think, 11 countries. So Antigua and Barbuda is one of them. So that's what we are going to be. It's just a series of islands, so many islands. I think uh, the population, the total population is about 140, I mean, one, I mean 44 uh, million. So it's a huge place, but we are focusing on Eastern Caribbean where Antigua and Barbuda is located. But generally about the Caribbean, is a subregion of the Americas that includes the Caribbean Sea and its islands. Some of them are surrounded by the Caribbean Sea and some border both the Caribbean Sea and the North Atlantic Ocean. If you care 
about geography, that's something for you. So the location is uh, southeast of the Gulf of Mexico and Northern America, east of Central America and north of South America. The population is about uh, 625,000, that's for the Antigua and Barbuda. And the time zone is GMT minus four. Right now, uh, Africa, Central Africa is GMT plus one. So GMT minus four means five hours away from where you are. There are nine countries, like I've mentioned, and you have the list of the countries there. Antigua and Barbuda is the one we are focusing on. The capital is St. John's, and the currency is the East Caribbean dollar, which is equivalent to, uh, I think, two, 2.7 East Canadian, uh, East Caribbean dollar is equivalent to one US dollar. So the, the, the currency is pretty strong. And then you have uh, the continent is within the North American continent. The prime minister is Gaston Browning, and the population is about uh, 94,000 persons as of 2022. The calling code is plus two plus one, uh, 268, and the nation drives on the left. The languages spoken are English and the Antiguan Creole. This country has visa-free travel to 130 countries which includes the UK, the whole of the EU, the US, uh, Canada. So uh, it's a nice place to be. And if you manage to get the passport eventually, of course, that's what it means. So why you should, why should you study in the Caribbean? That's a question that we would love to answer by saying the quality of education is very high. And this, uh, they have schools that are world renowned for medical programs. In fact, one of the, schools that we are covering offers only medical programs, no other programs. They're just medical schools. And then comparable affordability means even though you get this quality of education that is comparable with, with what you get in most of the top uh, uh, international study destinations, you pay lower prices. And the cultural experience is rich. Of course, it's always rich when you go to study abroad. The location is in the heart of the Caribbean. So that means you have access to various parts of the Caribbean. It's very easy to get around uh, the rest of the Caribbean. And the climate is an all year round warm. So no wicked winters. So you can be sure that if you are from Maybe the warm parts of Africa, you don't have anything to worry about. The uh, international student population is large and diverse, but there are a huge number of Nigerian students studying medicine in this uh, area. Uh, another incentive might be maybe after study, you have a job, tax is low, personal income tax is zero, capital gains tax, inheritance tax, and wealth taxes are all basically non-existent in this uh, country. So we're talking today about these uh, three programs, the pre-medicine program, the medical studies program, which is usually referred to as the MD program, and then transfer programs. Uh, general application requirements will include, uh, say, uh, a clear, clear scanned copy of your international passport. That is always a requirement for international students. Your certificate and uh, transcripts, always a requirement. Your passport photo, your personal statement, two reference letters, one professional, one academic, then bank statement for when you need to apply for visa. And sometimes you may need to do an interview depending on many factors. So I'll talk briefly about these three programs and how it applies. So the pre medicine program is an online program. It's a two-year program that offers participants direct pathway into the medical program. So these are the uh, requirements. Official high school transcripts in English. If it's not in English, a word by word certified translation is required. And that will include either the West African School Certificate, the General Certificate of Education, GED, and others that are equivalent to it. Uh, original non-translated transcripts will be expected to be sent directly to the admissions office. Unofficial transcripts may be accepted 
or are usually accepted for processing your application. But after that, you are expected to provide the uh, official transcript before you can register for the program. So for US and international students, your high school transcripts are expected to show successful completion of subjects, including English, maths, and chemistry, with a minimum grade of credit, that's the C, a minimum overall CGPA of 2.0, although 3.0 is expected or is preferred. But if you have 2.0 and you have a case, then we can plead the case for you. That's the reason for the last point. If you lack one of the core prerequisites, we can negotiate with the Associate Dean of the Medical Sciences on your behalf to see that uh, you are given uh, the opportunity to maybe do a makeup course so that it will enable you to go in. So the medical program or the MD program is a, the MD program is a four year program with two years of basic science and two years of clinical studies. So if you add everything together from the pre-med program, so you have two years of pre-med, two years of basic science, and two years of clinical studies, making a total of six years of study, which is usually the uh, expectation in most countries. Now, the issue here will be uh, if you are coming in with a bachelor's program. So you already have a bachelor's program. Then you can, you will only go, you, you can go in directly for the MD program, which means you only need to spend four years in the medical program, two years of basic science and two years of clinical studies, which is uh, similar to uh, the program in around the America uh, region. So this is uh, the degree requirement. If you are going in for the MD program, you need a bachelor's degree you or a minimum of three years of university study, and then it, which is equivalent to 90 credits. 90 credits, that's, uh, that's something that would be expected. So the coursework that is required for your undergraduate program is uh, elaborated more on the right. Biology, eight credits of biology, eight credits of uh, inorganic chemistry, eight credits of uh, organic chemistry, eight credits of general physics, and three credits of college level mathematics and six credits of college level English. Yeah. This is the requirement. So if you have a bachelor's degree, you will be expected to have covered all this in the bachelor's degree. If you don't finish a bachelor's degree, let's assume you are going in with a three year uh, university study, then you will be expected to have covered this much in your yeah. program. What does this mean? for uh, students in uh, maybe still starting, about to start their bachelor's program. It means that if your intention to transfer to the MD program later on, you have to factor in this requirement for coursework. So it means that if, for example, within year one to year four, you would have covered general biology with eight credits. If you wait until year four to or let's say you have to have covered 12 credits, and maybe every year or whenever you should cover 12 credits. So your the expectation for you will be that as you are going to, you make plans that by the end of the third year, you have covered nothing less than eight credits of biology, eight credits of inorganic or general chemistry eight credits of organic chemistry, eight credits of physics, three credits of mathematics, and six credits of English. It will mean that you have to work extra harder than other students because you have a goal. So that's what this means. So for transfers, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. We'll get to that. So for the transfer program, you can come in from any level of study you will be expected to go into wherever you are matched, your, your qualification matches. Let's say, for example, you are in your first year. So if you are in your first year of uh, university study, for example, and you want to 
transfer or you have just completed the first year and you want to transfer, you will be expected to uh, be able to uh, transfer to an equivalent place in the medical program. For example, by the time your transcript is evaluated, maybe you will qualify for the pre-med program or you might qualify for the basic science program, which is the first two years of the medical studies. So you can go in from any level, your transcripts will be evaluated, you can be advised to transfer to the pre-med program, to the basic science program, or if you have enough credit, then you will be able to transfer directly to the MD program. So in terms of uh, intakes and application deadlines, uh, this uh, program does not have a deadline. You can, you can submit an application at any time. So it's on a rolling basis. Weekly application reviews are done and then you will be contacted if you, uh, if you qualify. You may be expected to interview. So this is the fee. Uh, basically, for the pre-med program, you have uh, about 4,000 $867. So these figures are in US dollars. So, and these figures are per term. There are three, three terms in each year of these programs. So per term you pay, let's just, uh, I'm going to just uh, say this is 5,000 because I mean about a hundred and something difference doesn't really make for much. So $5,000 per term for the pre-med program about 10,000 per term for the basic science program. That is terms one to four of the medical uh, MD program. That's the first two years of the MD program. And for the last two years of the MD program, which is the clinical science program, the fee is 12,271. Now you see that there is a caveat there. 50% uh, scholarship applies to the basic science program which means if you get the 50% scholarship, you only have to pay 5,000 per term for the basic science program. And uh, this basic science program, I'm sorry, this scholarship is awarded based on your results and your performance during the interview. So everyone can apply for, I mean, you don't have to apply for this, so to say, it will be based on your uh, performance, your high school result, or your, uh, your, your bachelor's result as you are coming in. So during application, we will evaluate this, we will plead the case for you, and then you can come in. Now, uh, one other opportunity that is made available here is that if you are uh, doing transfer, if you are doing a transfer program, so you're already studying either for a bachelor's degree somewhere or for a medical degree somewhere, and you want to transfer to this program, if we uh, help you to process, that's if uh, Arrows helps you to process, you are entitled to an automatic 50% uh, discount, 50% waiver or scholarship. True. So there is uh, that opportunity provided to all the agents that are working with the university. And then, so these are just a few sample question and answers that we got, get from time to time. So minimum requirements, which I've spoken about, 3.0 CGPA is prepared, but 2.0 may be considered with letters of recommendation and personal statements, so, which has to be strong. Strong personal statement uh, is also considered. And then interviews may be scheduled to see how you can sell yourself how you can justify your qualification for this support. The program length, usually for the pre-med program is two years. It gives you a direct pathway to the MD program. And for the MD program is a whole four year program, including two years of uh, basic sciences and two years of clinical uh, sciences. Who can be a transferred student? Someone in the pre-medical program from another institution or an undergraduate student in the relevant field or a medical school student from another institution. All of them are qualified to transfer. And then there is also the question, can a nursing student transfer to the MD program? Yes, but there are times and conditions that must be fulfilled. 
there are entry requirements that must be met by the nursing student or other science students. So if you are studying other science students, microbiology, chemistry, biochemistry, physiology, all of those will also, uh, you can also be uh, allowed to join the medical program. So, and then uh, you also have the question there, uh, can international students work while studying, which is always a major question uh, for going to study anywhere. The answer is yes, there are possibilities for that. But if you know, if you're familiar with the workload for the medical students, I doubt there will be any opportunity. I mean, there will be any breathing space to even consider working. But they will say, yes, you are free to work if you have the chance, which is not likely. And then uh, is there a post-graduation work permit? No, there are is no official post-graduation work permit, like the type you get in Canada or UK, no. You don't have official post-graduation work permit. But if you find employment after study, you can always apply for the work permit. Is there a uh, permanent residency opportunity? Officially, no. You know, some countries have standard procedures that are in place that you know that, okay, after I have stayed for two years, I can apply for PR, no, that they don't have that kind of uh, program in place for students. But over time, you can uh, you can apply for PR. There are many other pathways for applying for PR. For those who came in early to the webinar, uh, the video that was playing when you came in, also you can see there that there is an economic migration where you can get a PR based on uh, business and there are so many other options but that is not associated with study like it is in other uh, countries. So I guess uh, that is the summary of what we have for you concerning medical studies in Antigua and Barbuda. So if there are uh, questions maybe later on, you may feel very free to reach out to Arrows Education through WhatsApp or Facebook or Instagram whichever one you are familiar with, you can always reach out to the office and someone will always attend to you.